Welcome to the WordPress Photography Podcast, the podcast for photographers who want to learn how to get the most out of WordPress to grow their photography business. You don't need to be a geek to understand WordPress. Settle back and listen as we show you how. Now, here's your host, Scott wyden Kivowitz. Welcome to episode 11. My name is Scott wyden Kivowitz, and I am joined by my co-host, Rachel from Photoscribe. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Scott. How are you? Doing very well now. I feel a lot better. I caught the WPPI flu, uh, <laughs> and uh, that put me a little under the, web under the weather for a few days, but now I am feeling about 95% uh, to full capacity, and uh, I am ready for another episode. Um, actually, by the time... Uh, so we're recording this on a... T what's today? Today's Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, on Thursday, our first Q&A episode goes live, episode 10. Yep. Uh, so that's really exciting. Again, for anybody who's listening new or has listened in the past, every 10 episodes we're going to do a Q&A. So um, visit imagely.com slash podcast slash Q and submit your questions, and we'll be sure to include those in on uh, the next one, which is going to be episode 20. Yeah, and that was great. We got some really good information. But So you guys have just gotten back from WPPI, and I'm really excited to dive into that. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely get into that. Um, speaking of you guys getting back. Yeah. yeah. So um, let's talk about who we have with us. Uh, a lot of people might um, recognize his face from the screen, tiny screen right now, but soon you'll see him a lot larger. Um, uh, so we have uh, uh, Andrew Funderberg, who's best known as the creator of Fundy Software and now Fundy Designer. Hey, guys. So, uh, <laughs> hey, uh, Andrew has been a serious photographer for about 15 years. Uh, he started exploring different genres of photography while living in Japan in the late uh, 90s and early 2000s. Uh, uh, that sounds like a long time ago. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It really does. Um, it was still recent, I swear. <laughs> uh, years ago. His, yeah, his first interest was uh, culture photography, and there were glimpses of street-style photography early on. He started shooting professionally in Japan in the early 2000s, that really does sound like, oh man, every time I say that, it does sound like a long time ago. <laughs> it, was, it was just a couple yeah. years ago, guys. It was, yeah. it was so recent. Yeah. Um, so he first second shot for weddings for a local studio, then was contracted directly uh, at three Iron Chef restaurants in Japan. That's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, so funny. I realized, realized that all of this was taking place in Japanese. There was no English going on at yeah, all. So I had intense. to you know, learn wedding photography in Japanese uh, first. On wow. film. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's definitely intense. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard enough to learn wedding photography uh, in your native language. Right, <laughs> so, right. So, um, so uh, Andrew, or Fundy, as we're going to be calling him in this episode, uh, has taken his company to new heights, and we're very happy to have, on, have him on the show. Um, I personally have known Fundy for many years through social media, and finally hey. after... Many we're both, years. We're both still very young, though. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, maybe in the in the twenty in the two thousands or early nineties. <laughs> yeah. um, so finally, after all these years, we had a chance to meet at WPPI. It was really cool. Um, his booth was 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 rocking. So I didn't really have a chance to speak to him in person too much because he was all over the place. But um, yeah, so that was really cool to finally meet you after all these years. It was great to meet you, too. Yeah, we got a couple high fives in, I think. Yes, yeah. I, I do believe so. so. Ships passing in the night, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, let's real, before we get into the WordPress news, let's take a little WPPI break and, yeah. uh, and, and, or, you know, break off. And let's talk a little bit about WPPI and how that was for you um, because you guys had a beautiful booth uh, again. And what I've heard from past WPPIs is the booth is always beautiful. So um, you had... A big booth. You had uh, places for people to see demos. You had uh, live demos going on. With was there double-sided scre TV screens on that? Yeah. So what? Yeah. What we like to do is we like to create a comfortable atmosphere. One of the things that uh, that is always really popular is we have uh, sofas for people to sit down because yep. they're so tired walking that that yep. floor. So we had we had two TV screens. Uh, we had demos on one screen, and then we had uh, speakers on the other screen who might be speaking on a fundy topic or might be speaking about uh, storytelling or shooting for the story or, or uh, image or business related on the other screen. Great. Um, so PPI, WPPI was big for you because you released the, the latest version of Fundy Designer, right? Do you want exactly. to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I actually, uh, if you want to do a screen share, I pulled it up to, I know we didn't go over that in the notes, but did you want to... Uh, do a little screen share while I while I talk, or sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Share your screen. I'll make sure that you're um, you're static on the on the video. 
Yep. So there we go. So if you're that. listening to this in a podcast form, you might want to come over to imagely.com slash podcast slash 11 so you mm -hmm. can see the video itself. Yes. yes. And this will just take just a couple seconds. So uh, complete UI reskin, uh, really beautiful, and then three main new features. The first is, is what I believe is the most powerful uh, image browser in any, uh, any photo design application. Uh, all of your tags come in through Lightroom or Bridge or, or Photo Mechanic, all of your star ratings. Uh, and then we've introduced some brand new tags that are also keywords, main image, cover photo, panorama, and the ability to group images. So you see like these two images are, are grouped together. Uh, you can tag an image to be a main image, uh, and you can tag an image to be a panorama, and you can also organize your, your images based on keywording uh, and, and just gives you a little bit more control. All right, image browser, comparison view, so you can compare wow. two separate images. So what we're looking at, listeners, is that we're really getting a hands-on view of what the software does in the image browser. So this isn't even designing an album yet. This is just uh, looking at the images, correct? Yeah, so this basically lets you kind of storyboard out the album if you would like to. And, yeah. and then our big, our big wow feature is, is this magic button right here. Uh, this, there's a whole lot going on under the hood, but uh, what we're dubbing is the very first ever truly professional auto design feature. Wow. Yeah, so, and, and it's um, for, uh, for, for those who have not ever looked yeah. into Fundy's software, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is actually utilizing your tags and your stars and all that. And your timestamps. Yeah. And, um, also, before Scott started talking, we actually already designed the album. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's all uh, done. So that's, uh, you know, so that's uh, the second thing is the auto design. Then the third thing is our brand new quick design picker that has over uh, 150 designs built in. So you basically can choose a style of design, and then you can just tab through that design wow. and go in. So uh, what we like to do is we like to marriage speed and control, and usually those are opposites. Usually if you want more speed, you have to give up control, and we like to marriage those. So you, so you actually have a ton more speed and a ton more control yeah. in version 7. So again, for listeners, what just happened is uh, between Fundy speaking and Scott speaking, the, des the album was designed through yeah. just press of a button. So that is pretty impressive. And then, obviously, the modifications that you can make now, it's almost like seemingly endless options. Yep. And, and, and you can send it out to have the album printed directly. Exactly, yeah. So we have uh, a ton of uh, direct partners. Uh, one that we wanted to mention, uh, because I know you work closely with this, is Tamara Lackey's Lush yes. Albums. So it's yes. a very special fine art album. Uh, beautiful, beautiful handcrafted materials, fine art printing, and 50% of all of the profits go directly to Beautiful Together that does great things like builds kitchens and bathrooms for or orphanages in Africa, helps adoption processes, uh, things like that. So, yeah. so a lot of really cool stuff. Yep, yeah, and Lush Albums, by the way, um, the, the albums are, are all made uh, without animal products. Correct. Um, so yeah. if, you're, if, you, if you feel strongly about your albums, not having animal products, Lush Albums is definitely a direction to look at. Um, aside from just you know supporting a great a great charity as well. Great. So um, yeah. yeah, so uh, you know I'm I I was very impressed with uh, with Fundy Designer at version seven. Um, even version six is is beautiful, but you've just taken it up another level um, yeah. in the in the album design world, and it's it's it's. It's impressive. Um, yeah. you guys, yeah. you, your team did a fantastic yeah. job. When we do a new version, we like to really blow it out of the water. Like, yeah. we, you know, it's it's uh, it's version six to version seven, but we really, for the technology that we put into it, we've moved from like a version six to a version eight or nine. Yeah. No, yeah. we're very, and thank you for allowing us to geek out because I know this is a WordPress yeah. podcast, but <laughs> yeah, there's sorry. so much you know, stuff in that software that you know I. I, just, I, as a geek, love you know getting into the nitty gritty of it. So you know, we can bring this back to a to a WordPress level too. So so we're going to get into this in a little bit. I have a, I have a question for for Fundy down down the road, but um, just as an FYI, there are album designer plugins out there for WordPress. Now, I have tested numerous ones. I haven't found one that um, 
really could uh, take my attention away from Fundy uh, as far as album design goes. So, um, but if you want a WordPress plugin, they are there. Um, but that's interesting. Yeah. See, you know. knowing Fundy and knowing the software, I couldn't. And I love WordPress, but I couldn't imagine doing that within the WordPress framework. Yeah. You yeah, it, it it would. That and, might be the only thing, Scott, that we recommend you don't do in order. <laughs> <laughs> currently, currently, that's the only thing that yeah. I personally recommend yeah. photographers not do. Um, you know, and, it really comes down to also des design. You're really you, you're dealing with full resolution images. Yeah. Right. Um, you're dealing with a, a lot of processing power, and it's just like you know Lightroom. I wouldn't want to process my raw photos online either, right? No. It, it doesn't make sense. It's it's not the right location. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, we do. We do, and a lot of our users do utilize WordPress. Um, you know, a quick export for web, uh, for yeah. creating a web gallery right. uh, on WordPress, uh, showing those images. Um, you know, we have Funny Designer has a blog collage. Right? Yes, it's which I love that. Uh, at, which ends up on WordPress and yep. and yeah. all of those things. So yeah. you know, I think it's one of those things of using the right tool for the right job. Right. Exactly, exactly. Um, I think the, the reason we mention is because we, we talk a lot, Scott and I talk a lot about um, kind of what you said before, the image gallery. You can do that in WordPress and you don't necessarily need another. There's a lot of tools out there that you can have your client proofing done with a third-party software, but um, there's a next-gen gallery and there's other plugins on WordPress that are pretty robust too. So right. that'll actually get us into um, our other news is that yeah. Imagely has launched Yes, uh, yeah, we launched a WPPI. Uh, we have actually have a big giveaway going on. That actually might end by the time this airs. Um, but um, we launched with uh, turnkey photography websites yep. and uh, pre-installed with all of our themes, which are based on Genesis, as well as uh, all, all of our plugins, including NextGen Gallery, NextGen, NextGen Pro, uh, as well as best-in-class plugins like Yoast SEO, Yoast Analytics, and things like that. Yeah. And um, uh, can you, uh, I think it'd be good, uh, me as a user, it's, I always do the same thing, but can you explain NextGen Pro to the users so that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So NextGen Gallery, uh, f the free version, NextGen Gallery, is, is our gallery management, gallery display, uh, basically portfolio system. And it works with uh, al the galleries and albums, which is basically like Lightroom's collections and collection sets. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Uh, NextGen Pro adds on top of that additional display styles as well as e-commerce for uh, print sales and digital downloads and proofing and image protection and, and many things like that. Um, and we are working on print lab integration as well. It'll be the first uh, for WordPress to have a true print lab integration mm -hmm. um, and, a, and a bunch of other fun stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's the big difference is uh, NextGen Pro adds on top of what the free plugin has to offer. Mm -hmm. um, Adding the most most important things being e-commerce and proofing to that, right. um, and it's e-commerce. It's e-commerce that's designed for images, not e-commerce that's designed for just any products. Yeah. So, um, but uh, the the big thing with Imagely, the launch is the turnkey solution. So um, you can literally go to Imagely, sign up for a uh, an account to host with with us, and the website is actually designed for you. If you don't already have one, we we will migrate you to our system as is if you want. But um, and you still get all of our themes and plugins. But um, we we can um, launch the site for you with the design done with all the dummy content in place for you to just go in and edit. So yeah. what I really point. like about Imagely too is you can use any theme. Um, although they have themes available based on the Genesis platform, which are you know is is a really strong platform. But you could use any theme that you already have. You could use Profoto. You could use whatever you currently yeah. have. But the, it's the it's the back end stuff. It's the Yoast SEO plugin already installed. Um, Scott and I were talking, and uh, Akismet is now mm -hmm. making it harder. So it was free before, and you can yeah. still get it for free. But yeah. technically, you're not supposed to use it right. for free unless you have a personal blog. So right. all of us with photography business blogs are supposed to pay for that. Yep. It's a spam protection, Akismet. If you're not sure, mm -hmm. but. If you're on the Imagely, they've purchased an enterprise license so that you're still getting it for free, but you're using the correct license for your business. So yeah, we're, we're, things like that are, are really important. Yep, we're including the, the spam protection, the enterprise class spam protection for free, basically, to yeah. our to our hosting customers. Um, and it does a great job, and you don't have to worry about you know potential legal issues of not using the paid version, because you are. Right. Um, so... Um, 
Yeah, so that's that's one bit of news. The other news I want to talk about was, uh, which we just talked about, was Fundy Designer 7. Um, so we're not going to get back into that uh, just, na- just yet, but that was the second bit of news I want to talk about. The last thing is uh, WordPress is getting close to version 4.5, um, and it's, it's important changes. There's important changes that impact photographers big time. Um, so please listen closely. Currently... <laughs> Currently, WordPress compresses images from the uh, a 100 quote unquote quality to 80 quality, and with a plugin or a little script, you can actually increase the quality back to 100. Now, this is for any images that are uploaded to through the media library. The plan for 4.5 is to drop that quality even further to, I believe, around 60 per 60 quality. Um, so the impact isn't going to be completely noticeable for large images, but it will big time for thumbnails. So if you're using a plugin for your galleries, which rely on the WordPress media library, check with the developers to make sure that they're including a script to remove the compression completely, or to raise it back up to 80 or whatever you want them to do, or give have you know or an option for it. Um, but with that said, I am glad to say NextGen Gallery is not impacted by this in any way, because NextGen Galleries are not using the media library at the moment. They have it, We have our own system. Um, and uh, NextGen Gallery is also Retina, so we actually code to um, make sure that your photos look good on every device, very crisp and clear. Um, as long as you have NextGen Plus or Proactive, um, you have Retina available. Um, so that's another thing that Pro does that NextGen Gallery does not. Wow, um, that, I mean, this is really interesting because I'm assuming they're doing the compression for speed. Yes, without a doubt. And so... Yeah. Um, but didn't they just in 4.1.2 or something bring out uh, the retina, meaning you could have the different sized images already, right? Um, responsive. So they, they added responsive capability. Um, so that uh, depending on what what screen size, a different image shows, which means each of those images that, that WordPress creates by default in the media library are going to be compressed to whatever the new number is. Wow, that's really interesting. Well, so if you're a photographer and this is something that you care about, which you should, yes. you know, look into um, what how your galleries are displayed in your themes and you know, make be proactive about it because this potentially could be important. Yes. Um, I will say uh, I've heard from the developer behind Sunshine Photocart. If you're using Sunshine Photocart, uh, he, he includes a script to remove the compression already, so you're, you're safe there. I can't speak about the other ones. I haven't heard from them, but... Um, That's interesting. Yeah. Well, well, we will continue to update this breaking WordPress news. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. Okay. News is done. Uh, yeah. Fundy, what's going on in your world? Okay, so uh, obviously from a software standpoint, our uh, version 7 was a big uh, release for us. It's the first major update since January 2014. Uh, We talked about that. We're super excited about that. Uh, The feedback has been uh, insane. You know, uh, SLR Lounge pushed it out. Uh, We got interviewed on USA Today Tech. Uh, I saw that. That was awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, uh, Rangefinder's pushing it out. So everybody's really excited about that. I think this is going to be a quantum leap for... Uh, photographers who have albums as a core part of their business. Uh, One of the things that we're really big on is, you know, albums uh, aren't just uh, a little niche of your business if you're a wedding photographer. They're a main, or a portrait photographer, they're a main part of your business. As as part of your business, it can be a main contributor to uh, your bottom line. You know, we have a lot of photographers that I work with personally that are really invested in albums, you know, they'll have between two and four thousand dollars on top of whatever they book for their wedding, right? So, you know, that's an extra thirty to, to fifty thousand dollars a year in, in revenue for a single photographer, right? For a studio that has multiple photographers, you know, you're moving up to a quarter million dollars swing in, you know, what you uh, bring in, which wow. is huge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we're really excited about that. Uh, we launched Gallery Designer for in-person uh, wall art sales. Uh, port- photo- portrait photographers are loving that. And then in the fall, we'll have a big 7.5 update uh, that will bring uh, frames and mats and uh, client invoices and, and kind of complete that full end-to-end suite. So being able to sit down and do everything in one platform uh, with one project, so our projects are just like a Lightroom catalog where you have your, you know, your catalog of, of the Joneses' wedding. You got your your library, your development, uh, you know, your web, all of that. So Funny Designer is the same. You bring in one project, you can do your album, you can do your wall art, your blog collages, everything within one project. 
And so we're just going to keep building out this platform. Great. Can I ask you a personal question of sure. how did you get, um, because we're all geeks here, <laughs> yeah. how did you get into sort of creating the software and, you know, are you a developer? What's your background in the, sort of the tech side of it? Uh, well, I have a degree in English literature, so yeah. that's how I got started. <laughs> that's what my, my BA is. Uh, so I, I just got started out of being frustrated with what was available. I'm, I'm a big uh, hater of templates. Yeah. Um, I, I just hate the word template. It really boxes you in. You know, I, I, I cannot count how many times uh, before I got started in the business where I had this design I really liked, except you know, I had a vertical where a horizontal box needed to go. And yeah. If I put that vertical in there, it would, it would crop it, which I didn't want. And so uh, one of the things you'll see, we actually got a patent on uh, template-free design, is that you can swap a vertical and a horizontal and the box will morph and the yeah. design will morph to make everything fit. So that's how I got started, is just that I was really frustrated with wh what was out there in terms of speed and flexibility. Um, you know, and if, if I would have known now what I have known then, I would have been too scared to start. Yeah. I, we hear you know, that a just, lot, Scott. I, just, I feel I like we in. hear that. Yeah. yeah. So I always hear, uh, like, business gurus giving business advice. Like, the first thing you want to do is sit down and... Uh, you know, lay out your business plan and all of that stuff. If I would have done that first, I would never would have started. The yeah. Business. So uh, my my advice is the opposite: is just to jump in. If you yeah. really want to do something, just jump in. Yeah, and That's you and you were, you were lucky enough to find a team that could take your vision and and really make it and yeah. you know, bring it to fru fruition. So yeah, and you know, part of that we have a great team now, but it's a completely different team that I had three years ago. You know, there's oh, nobody working for me now that worked for me three years ago. So mm -hmm. also being uh, open to having your team evolve to meet the needs. At, yeah. At the right. Time, yeah. Uh, so what is, really important. what is your background with WordPress? I know the Fundy site is on WordPress. Do you have, have, is your personal site on it? Have you always had a site on it? Where, what is that exploration for you? Yeah, I've, uh, our site has always been on WordPress. Uh, you used to use the Karma theme. I used um, to. Well, I did use the Karma theme. I forgot yeah. about that. That was, yeah. a, that was a sweet theme, dude. You want to know how I knew that? <laughs> how? And it's not because I just happened to go to the site and say, "Hey, what theme does he use?" Yeah. Um, uh, before working at Imagely, I was working for an IT security company, and uh, I converted them from HubSpot to WordPress, and I gave them all the Genesis designs to choose from because I, I own them all. And yeah. and he said, no, I'll go look at Theme Forest and I'll just pick one. And he picked yeah. Karma. So I, just, <laughs> I recognized it like, like immediately. Right away. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but we've always been WordPress and, uh, you know, our, our site has always evolved and our um, branding has, has always evolved. And what I love about WordPress is that uh, you can completely change your branding and look and keep your content. Because yeah. we... Yes. Have uh, I have no idea how many blog posts we have. You know, we have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of blog posts, and so that being able to have that travel with us is really important. Yeah. And then the the flexibility. So our current Fundy uh, designer site was custom hand built by uh, Flow Sites, uh, and uh, Flow Agency did the branding. So so we did a full branding and. Uh, new site with them over this last year and, and I believe we launched that in October, the new site, September, October, I forget. Uh, and so love that and then for my personal photography uh, and I haven't updated the images on it for uh, probably four or five months, um, I'm really into street photography personally. Uh, it's a very high profitable uh, portion of photography, I'm sure you're aware. A lot of lot, big, huge market out there for street photography. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in oh, my yeah. head, I was like, "Wait, is he so serious?" Much. No. No, I'm not serious at all. Yeah, I have I, <laughs> all I've done is 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 thrown money away on on Leica gear and Leica lenses for street photography. It's but, profitable when you throw your photos into a book and sell it. Yeah, I don't even but think it. if you do that. <laughs> But, but you love it, right? You're very passionate about it. That's my love. Uh, yeah. And so yeah. one of the things that I love is, is going out on the street and, he and hearing people's stories. Uh, you know, uh, talk to, I talk to a lot of people who are on the street maybe begging for money and kind of just hearing their stories about where they came from, you know, where they're at, where they're going, uh, doing portraits. Uh, I always give people a print right on the spot. I carry a little uh, Polaroid printer with me. And so oh, I'll I love that. And give them a print right on the spot. Um, uh, going into a little photo geekiness, why'd you choose yeah. the Polaroid and not the Fuji? <laughs> uh, well, it, it's actually a Fuji in, Instax printer. So oh, okay. So it's happened. a yeah. So it's just Polaroid it's, made the printer, just, but it's 
Instax. No, Polaroid didn't have anything to do with it, but nobody knows what a Fuji Instax print is. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. So right. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm flying loose with the brand and, and nice. trademarking yeah. here. <laughs> yes. so nice. it's, Way it's to call them out, Scott. Yeah, I dig little, it, I dig it. It's a little Fuji printer uh, that okay. prints little half sides Polaroid-looking prints, uh, little instant prints, and so um, I carry that with me. Uh, give people prints on the spot, and and that's just kind of what I love, and that's kind of how I relate uh, my love of story with my personal work uh, through to my professional life. Yeah. Nice. Uh, now, um, you said you did wedding photography. Did you in Japan? Did you ever do that when you came back to the states, and you know have a I, web presence for that? I. I did. I do not have a web presence for that. I shot weddings for about a year and a half, weddings and portraits for about a year and a half after I got back, uh, about two years. And then I, the software company just kind of took over yeah. all of my time. I love doing photography. I, sh I shoot about one wedding every two years oh, <laughs> when good. someone asks me. Um, I, my last wedding I shot uh, all Leica, so it was all manual focus, manual flash, um, and it was really hard. <laughs> But rewarding, I'm sure, in terms yeah. of an artist's point of view. Yeah, it was it was it was super fun, um, and mostly just two lenses, 35 and 50. Those are yeah. my my favorites. And so my that's my my personal website is Project 3550, and so I shoot everything 35 and 50 millimeters. Oh, well, awesome! Well, we'll definitely link to that. Yep. So I had a follow up question for you with the branding stuff, mm -hmm. um, because you went through the process. Do you have any? tips or tricks that you think photographers would uh, appreciate or relate to if they're going through their own branding process? Because yes. so, 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 so what we talk about in WordPress is exactly what you said, that it's like a, a theme is like a dress. You can take that and all your content mm -hmm. comes over. I mean, how was that experience for you? So very interesting because one of the things, like I really, really love working with local companies and we hired a local branding company and they did a horrible job. We ended up having to fire them. We ended up losing, you know, just burning through like fifteen thousand dollars and getting nothing, and wow. so you know my uh, my recommendation is first you know find someone that you really get along with that you have a real connection with, and second uh, that has a lot of expertise in in your field, yeah. and that's really what kind of bit us uh, is that the person didn't have a lot of ex expertise in our field, and so that's why we ended up going with Flow Agency. Uh, I've known Ross at Flow Agency for a couple years now, probably, but I've known uh, Sasha, who is their marketing director, for probably, uh, let's see, uh, when did I meet Sasha? Let's see, I moved back here, in eight, probably about five or six years. So you've so, had a relationship, and so that helped you to move over. and. Yeah, and I think it really helped uh, that they, more so me knowing them, is they knew who I was on an yeah. internal level, and that really yeah. helped. You know, one of the things that you'll see that you can kind of see, let me just tilt this back up, you can see our Fundy Designer mark there, and then you can see our sub marks for our sub products like Album Builder and Gallery Designer. Uh, one of the things that people have noted is that, that it kind of looks like origami, right. uh, that the origami F on the Fundy Designer, and that kind of gives a little bit of a nod to the 13 years I spent living in Japan. Yeah, right? that's those awesome. Little, those little touches are, are meaningful on your brand, I think. Yeah, uh, that's for sure. Yeah, and you know, they, they did a great job with it. Um, Thank so, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love the new branding. So, But how was the process? So we talked about the branding and moving. Mm -hmm. How was it pulling it into WordPress? Did they do the work for you? Did you do they, the work? They, they did all the work because it was a custom okay. theme. Oh, uh, okay. You know, so, and that was one thing that really helped, especially with uh, photographers, any business that's online, finding a company that can do your branding and your uh, site together at the same time, I think is a big help. You yeah. know, and even if, the, even if it's a, a purchased theme, you know, uh, maybe they're using uh, Imagely and, and the themes you guys provide, but having the brand person aware of that at the beginning so they can be stylizing your brand and choosing your theme and that integration all at the same time so there's not a disconnect at the end. Yeah, that's actually yeah. great advice. Cause they're, and, I, and I'll go on to say the people that you work with for your content too you know, should be able to manipulate the theme enough if they need to. Exactly. I think that's a, a, another extension of that, but that's a really good point. Now and, how and, much, and also I just wanted to say, and, and also um, the fact that you were already on WordPress definitely made the process easier because as you said earlier, because of WordPress, the content content travels with you. Yeah, so. I mean, they you know they sucked up our entire content library in an hour or two uh, yeah. and created a, a demo site to start working on. You know, oh wow, that's right awesome. Away. I mean, it was you know it was super super fast. Yeah. Yep. 
Now, what is your knowledge of WordPress personally? How much experience have you had going in? Do you think it is the right platform for photographers? Where, where do you stand on that personally? So I know everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, I, I'm a big fan of WordPress. So, and it, it relates to my philosophy of everything. So, you know, even you can even see it in the software we create. Like Funny Designer, right? You pop up in the Quick Design Picker, and you have over 150 designs to choose from. You choose it, but then you can move anything you want wherever you want in a couple seconds. So, yeah. I'm a big believer in. Uh, choosing a platform that you can always build on and change. Right. right. So I think that's what WordPress is. So uh, you know, one of the things I see a lot of uh, photographers moving to uh, uh, companies like Squarespace or something. And and what what concerns me about moving to a company like Squarespace is that the back end and the themes are both controlled by one company. And I think there's a lot of danger in that. Um, you know, if if Squarespace, you know, all of a sudden gets a ton of funding and goes a very corporate route, they could leave all these creatives behind with right. a bunch of themes they don't like, and then your content is stuck on a platform that you're no longer interested in. There's no way to suck all of that content out. Right. Whereas WordPress, it being an open source platform, you know, if you have your theme uh, and your hosting with somebody and you're experiencing problems, you just suck your content off pop up open on a completely different server uh, and throw a new theme on it and you're good to go, right? Yeah. And, yep. and so it's a couple weeks of work versus uh, months and months of work of having to completely rebuild everything. So I, I, I really, um, uh, it really scares me uh, to put your business on a platform when, yeah. when that platform is in complete control of, of someone else. Yeah, and that, that's a beautifully way, articulated way to say it because we have this conversation about Squarespace versus WordPress a lot and I do think there's a market for photographers who just need a site to go up and are, are concerned about the technical, um, you know, getting it out on, WordPress, on Squarespace can get you a web presence. And there is a way to move from Squarespace to WordPress, but like you said, it's not as seamless as WordPress yep. to WordPress or yeah. host to host, so you're always going to be up against moving your content. <laughs> But the biggest thing about not owning your content, I mean, that's a conversation yeah. that I have with a lot of photographers, and it's 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 hard for, to to think about it on a that sort of macro level. But you don't own it, just like Facebook. You don't own Facebook. You don't own what they, you know, yeah. how they use your images. But on WordPress, you do. So, um, I just wanted to say. Uh, in one minute, you gave us two really juicy quotes. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Feel free to use them. Yeah, just send, send the check this way. Like, and <laughs> um, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> no. um, but, but I also wanted to say, um, regarding like Squarespace to WordPress, um, in the next week or so, I'm going to be going through the process of migrating someone from Squarespace to, to the Imagely uh, hosting platform, and uh, which is WordPress. Um, and so in the next podcast episode, I might be able to talk about how that went and struggles I faced and and may, might be able to offer some tips for everybody who yeah. wants them. Um, you know, in the future, we plan on writing a, a, an automated script for yeah. it because um, there's so many photographers that are moving back from Squarespace to WordPress right. yeah. that it, we, we have to have one. But Let me throw a little nugget out there, too. The reason yeah. that you can uh, migrate from Squarespace to Word, WordPress is that Square, Squarespace is letting you. They, they yes. could right. Shut, right? They can shut that down at any time. Yeah. Right. They could decide right. tomorrow... That we're just going to shut that down, and and your content is trapped. Right, and and they they actually have an export to WordPress script, um, yeah. or export to WordPress uh, file that you can then import using the WordPress importer. But I have I don't know for sure because I haven't actually used it yet. Yeah. If it can import pages as well, or just blog posts, mm -hmm. um, and I don't even know if it imports images yet. So I'm going to be finding out all this hopefully in the next week or so. But yeah, and I um, I, I think that's the biggest point. You know, we can argue about SEO back and forth about which yeah. one's better, which one displays your images better, and and those are in some ways just semantics of the fact that you own your yep. content on one platform and you don't own it on another. Exactly. But, Yep. So, but again, there are, I don't want to, because we talked to Tamara about this, about Squarespace's WordPress, and mm -hmm. th there are uses, there is a, obviously a need for Squarespace, a, yep. a very quick, you know, place to get your images up and a, have a professional looking site. But Definitely. for a long-term strategy, having a web presence, obviously that's why we live on the WordPress world. Yeah. 
Um, so let's move into any uh, themes and plugins that you recommend. Um, now it could be anything, uh, you know, whatever you use on, at Fundy, whatever you use personally. Yep. Um, what what do you recommend on either side of the coin? Exactly. I'd have to pull up my plugins browser. One one thing that uh, is really helpful for us when we're pushing out version 7, mm -hmm. uh, in the past we've kind of had our video tutorial section and we've had our, our manuals, but going back to our user base, we found that our users really ended up uh, using our blog posts uh, most because we'll have like a tip on something. It's like how to design a signing book, right? right. So one single story within a blog post. And so we're going to move our entire help structure over to our blog section. So oh, uh, one of the plugins we're, we're using is, is that there's a plugin that is, uh, it's, uh, it's hide, hide your category in your blog feed, right? Yep. So we have our blog feed when we post our news stories, but we don't really want our manuals showing up in our blog feed. Right. So uh, a plugin that, that hides that blog feed is great. Um, so just those little tiny plugins that help you accomplish what you need. Uh, on that micro level, uh, right. it's really good. So when you say hiding, so you're creating a category called manuals, so ways for people to use the Fundy software better. Right. You don't want that to show up on your main blog page, so Correct. everything tagged with that category will then be taken off of that. Correct. Yep. Wow, that's and, great. And, but and still, but still searchable. Right, but still, still, but still searchable, yep, yep. And then I'm going to segue into a topic that we forgot to mention earlier. On I know, this. I was just thinking about that. It, it also, uh, we also use that to hide um, our uh, posts that go on our Storytellers page. Right. Because we'll have, uh, we'll have blog posts on Storytellers that, that we push out, but every single one of our testimonials uh, on our Storytellers page is actually a singular blog post that we can add and remove content to. So one of the things that we launched WPPI was our was our storytellers campaign, and uh, over you know, I've been a big believer in print and albums for years and years. Like we do a family album every single year, a ton of family prints on the wall, um, and I think there's this big resurgence in print. And one of the things that we're trying to do in a company is is really make photographers realize what uh, print means first full circle for themselves and how that relates to their clients. So we're doing a series of videos and blog posts on this. I know that Rachel's watched uh, a few of them. Um, and Didn't cry. Totally not. Much. <laughs> okay, I cried. <laughs> oh, did you freeze? Just make you ball. But... Um, and, and it's a very simple concept. Uh, photographers bring a print that's very special for them, to them. They talk about that print and what it means to them and then have them talk about what print means for their clients. Like, why do they make albums? Why do they sell wall art? Uh, not from a financial standpoint, but, but from a, a moral obligation standpoint. Because when we really get down to it, um, it's uh, what we provide is uh, the, the quote that seemed to resonate uh, with people is that prints are a bridge between generations. Like, it's a bridge across generations. So yeah. when we give a wedding album, uh, there's a very good chance that album's going to end up in a box or a trunk somewhere, and it's going to be rediscovered uh, 50, 60, 80, 100 years from now. Like, uh, we, in our family, we just discovered within the last couple of years a, a print that um, was of my great great uncle from World War I. I actually had it right here. So, this print is 100 years old. That's well, crazy. This is the original. Um, and Whoever took this could teach me a thing about lighting. Look at that lighting. Right. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> right? you know? So uh, this, you know, is a great great uncle. Um, you know, he was killed in World War One. Uh, this was taken in World War One in the south of France. And if this print didn't exist, we would have forgotten about him. Yeah. Right. And and you know, it's you know, it's it's somebody that I never met. Uh, it's somebody that my parents never met. And uh, but it's it's reassuring to know that as we print things and stick them in the box, stories are going to be rediscovered uh, down, down the road. And so that's what it's really about, is, is keeping those stories alive across generations. Yeah. Now, and you're going to France to recreate that picture, correct? I am. So you're creating your own story around the story. Exactly. So you can see, uh, you know, that's, that's the thing, too, is like, you know, somewhere on these prints or albums or something, stick your information on there. Because I... Uh, you know, I saw this, and I just got Google Maps, and I said, you know, I wonder. And uh, the studio was still in business in the south of France. So I'm going to yeah. travel there. 
this summer, uh, we're going to do a documentary with my buddy Ben from Style and Story Creative, and I'm going to have the portrait recreated. That's awesome. It's amazing. And for our listeners, uh, Fundy just showed the print and then showed at the bottom the studio name so that he was able. And, yep. and you know, that can get into a whole discussion on watermarks and on your web presence having not for people to steal it, but really so that people in the Pinterest world can find you when the metadata is stripped of an image, you still have some tangible way on the web for people to come back to you. So there's a lot of discussions there. But mm -hmm. well, I think we're at – oh, go ahead. Yeah, and Image Brander and Fundy Designer is just 19 bucks, so it's a pretty good deal. Yeah. I have to put a shout-out for the blog collager because the Fundy <laughs> program is amazing. And if you yeah. go to the Photoscribe blog, I did a tutorial um, on how to use it, and it does everything that all the other software does and more, um, and the image quality upon export is pretty crazy awesome. So I have um, to throw that out. Rachel, make sure you uh, add that to the show notes so I can include that. Um, uh, Two, two thoughts on my end uh, along that same uh, topic before we move on. Um, one is, uh, for me, my biological father died before I was two. So when I see photos or find photos of him, um, I don't know much about him. I only know what is told yep. to me. So uh, when I see photos, it you know, yeah. brings yeah. me joy to see s stuff about him that I may not have realized in the past, like the fact that um, I, I don't know if you, this box that right there, that box, yeah, uh -huh. um, was his inside are all of his his records, including original Beatles records. And, oh, nice. Um, so I, it's kind of reminds me of that, you know, like uh, it's nostalgic. It, it makes me it, that's his handwriting in crayon on the box, you know. Yeah. Seeing his handwriting is like finding an old photo. Yeah. It's, it make, gives you chills. It makes you think about things and and think about your own life and. Um, now your own kids and things like that. So yeah. Um, so print your photos. <laughs> yes, print, yeah. print your photos. Um, so join me. I'm doing a print 365 project. I'm up to print 250 uh, for a whole year. Doing a print for every wow. day of the year. That was my next question. If you yeah. were still doing that. So um, yeah. yes. Do you, you want to go into a little bit about about that before we close yeah. up? And how do you do that logistically? Do you do that with the I printer do. that you have, or do you just print them, <laughs> or do you print them out to uh, a lab? Like what is the? How do you do? That? However the hell you want to print, just print. Sorry. So I, you know, I uh, father uh, of two, wife. I travel a lot for business. I'm running my own business, so I don't have time to go out and take a picture of a flower and print it every day, right? So, uh, and you know, street photography. I don't have time to go downtown Portland do do photography every day. So I do it in chunks. So I, I'll go. I'll do a bunch of photos uh, on the weekend, and then I'll do a bunch of prints. But the goal is to have a print for every day of the year. Uh, and then right now I'm behind by about 10 days, but I'm going to be in Boston on Sunday, and I'm, I'm four hours blocked out, so I'm hoping to get 15 to 20 keepers uh, in Boston so that then I can catch up, right? So just ebb and flow, do whatever you need to do to make a print every day. Uh, and it's amazing uh, how much I've learned by printing so often. I've, I've learned that... Sometimes a photo on the screen looks awesome and it looks like crap in print, and sometimes it's and sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes it looks crap on screen mm -hmm. on screen, and you print that out and you're like, holy crap, there's some magic there yeah. that I didn't see. Paper so, paper can really bring a photo to life. Yeah, uh, and so and I think and for me this is uh, we have all of these uh, family albums and family prints, uh, but. This hopefully is a legacy for my kids, so they can see what I was interested in, as a from a professional level of photography. Right. And uh, one of the things I love about street photography is it, it it documents. And so as people view them today, they're they're really cool. But when people view them 50 years, they get to see a glimpse glimpse into what Portland, Oregon looked like in in 2015. Yeah. Uh, when it's 2065. Yeah. yeah. Um, one thing, one thing that I do, um, it's not really an ongoing project. It's just something I just force myself to do. Is, um, you know, Facebook now has these, um, what do they call it, uh, craft craft books or whatever they call it. It's like a, uh, you can make basically make a photo album of your child that doesn't exist on that can't be on Facebook yet. Um, yeah. not, you know, so I actually have one from my social book where it pulls up. Yeah. Because again, yeah. it was easy, so it's all of the things that I posted on social media, nice. and it prints it all out, yeah. and you know, I mean, there's there's actually a lot of options like that because, again, use what you're already 
using and get it yeah. printed and you know. Yeah. Well, what I do is because Facebook um, directly won't print it. Um, I just have this album that I can share with friends and family around the world. But every photo I put in that one album, I make it note that to print that. So next yeah. time I do a batch of prints, I you know include my daughter's photos, whichever yeah. whatever I just uploaded, to print as well. So I have it on Facebook and on paper. Yeah. Um, so um, anything. Well, yeah, so that I was just going to segment it out. That was that's a great way. I mean, we talked about funding, we talked about WordPress, we talked about online, and we talked about printing and storytelling. Yeah. So, I mean, these are all facets of yeah. running a photography business. That's important. Yeah. Is there yeah. anything else that you want to talk about in WordPress space or? Well, I think you know, uh, I think WordPress is just definitely the platform uh, to be on. Uh, I'm excited to see what Imagely is doing. That's great. You know, uh, check out the flow themes uh, if if you're looking for a new theme. Also, uh, Ross is great to work with. Uh, but one thing I would like to do is just challenge uh, photographers out there to uh, go back and look at your old prints and kind of discover those old stories from your family and relate that to yourself and your business going forward. So I just challenge everybody to really look back at how uh, stories influence. Uh, our families because of these old prints and then what that means and, and our obligation as professionals for our clients going forward. Yes. Yeah, I love that. Well said. Um, well, thank you, Fundy, for joining us today. Thank and, you. Yeah, and thank you, Rachel, for being an awesome co-host. And you as well, <laughs> Scott. Um, you can find the show notes uh, from today's episode at imagely.com slash podcast slash 11. 11. Wow, I can't believe we're at 11. I know. Uh, it's <laughs> crazy. Um, so until next time. Wait, we can't, we can't make a joke to take it to 11. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> You've been listening to the WordPress Photography Podcast. To listen to other episodes and to subscribe to the podcast via iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and more, please visit imagely.com forward slash podcast. 